Hello everybody, I'm a practicing therapist and a doctoral student of psychology. Today we're going to go over the psychology of folks who are highly sensitive. This was requested a couple times and I think it's important because it likely means a lot of my viewers and just folks in general want to understand what is the perception of highly sensitive? What does it mean? What's the definition based on research? What are the common traits? What are the pros? What are the cons? And how does this correspond to other diagnostic impressions such as autism or PTSD? And we're going to cover that very slightly because there isn't much research on that. And although I do have a perspective on it, I don't want to really say much without further research. So the diagnostic impression portion, we may touch a little bit of it today, but not too much. And I might make a separate video on that, um, the differential diagnosis, because highly sensitive individuals, that's not a diagnosis, okay? That's a character or actually I'll say a personality variation. That's all it is, at least based on the research that I'm looking at. So first let's talk about the definition. What actually is a person who is highly sensitive? This research was done in 1997 and this is one of the more, at least from my understanding and correct me if I'm wrong, original research based on highly sensitive individuals, which is why I chose this one for most of the video. There are definitely other research that adds more detail, which we will talk about. But this research is pretty fundamental to this perspective. And if anyone has access to it, if you're interested, look into it. There's a lot of details about this. And basically, we're seeing based on this research, some people might describe it as a temperament, biologically based. I think that there's some truth to all of that. It might be biologically based. It might be based on a trauma response. It might be a coping mechanism. It might be behavioral. So I'm not really entirely sure how true that is to this current day now that we have more research, but I'm just kind of describing what that was like in 1997. But in general, these attributes, I still feel like I can stand behind. I don't know what you feel like. Because um, again, with research, there's a lot, the, sometimes there are mixed results and this is one of those instances and most research is going to be like that so take everything that is said even in research even what I'm saying people's opinions with a grain of salt and just kind of attribute it to how you feel or how you respond in your environment and your perception that might be a stronger characteristic for you to look towards now um, based on the research highly sensitive individuals are t they tend to have a heightened sensitivity to environmental social and emotional stimuli along with a deeper cognitive processing of these experiences. They replay these experiences over and over and try to find meaning out of it, okay? The research demonstrated that these individuals are more perceptive to subtle details, subtle in description of what other people who are not highly sensitive perceive as a detail they may overlook or subtle and they may not necessarily focus on. Individuals who are highly sensitive may be more emotionally reactive based on another person's perspective. And they also process information more deeper, more I want to say intuitive because it's natural to them, but also they look things over in a more detailed way, more than those who are not highly sensitive, okay? Um, as I mentioned before, individuals who are highly sensitive, this is a normal personality variation. This is not a diagnostic impression, okay? Now, what are the common traits of folks who are highly sensitive? Depth of processing. We already talked about that. Highly sensitive folks actually reflect deeply on their experiences and they carefully evaluate these things before responding. This research was done in 2012 and what we found is that those who are highly sensitive actually have an increased activation in their brain associated with higher order cognitive processing suggesting that they are more thorough with their evaluation of sensory and emotional input, okay? Um, the next one is emotional reactivity or empathy. And why I put them both together is because they work hand in hand. A lot of people who might be more emotionally reactive, sometimes it comes from the empathy, right? And so the research done in 2014 actually found that individuals who are highly sensitive are strongly affected by emotion, both their own and by others, right? And it shows that they actually have more, I'm going to try and explain this. Highly sensitive individuals show stronger neural responses in emotional processing brain regions, okay? And that is explained by that heightened empathetic ability. Now, the reason why I mentioned it's a little bit tricky in general with overlapping diagnostic impressions, a lot of other, you know, psychological impacting events or 
neurological conditions. Some may overlap in these areas as well, but that doesn't necessarily completely distinguish the two because of that overlap, but it also means you can't have both. It doesn't it doesn't cancel out the other one is the best way to put it. There's a word for it. I'm just, I don't have it right now. I'm tired, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. You can have both, you can have one, you can have the other, but there are differences, even though it might not necessarily be as clear in this video today, but I will look on more research about it. There isn't much, but um, the next one is overstimulation. Individuals who are highly sensitive tend to be over, they tend to feel overwhelmed by sensory rich environments such as crowds, noise, or bright lights. This can overlap with autism. That is that differential diagnosis. However, autism has another, you know, plethora of responses, perspectives, whatever it may be. I made a video on that, how that's um, diagnosed from a psychological perspective. We learn about psychometrics in school. So you might like that if you want to understand more about it. Highly sensitive individuals are sensitive to those environments, but they do respond a little bit differently typically, right? Um, however, sometimes they can feel more fatigued and, or more withdrawn comparison to others who are not highly sensitive based on the 1997 research. So you guys can look into those details as well. They tend to also be aware of subtle differences in their environment in comparison to other people, which is why I used the word um, subtle, right? Just as we had found research done in 2011, they're still seeing this heightened neural response to subtle visual and auditory stimulation in comparison to folks who may not necessarily fit in this criteria. So that's really interesting. The next one is the best way to put it is aesthetic sensitivity. Let me know what you guys think is a better word because I'm not sure about that one. Um, basically it is, I'll explain it. It is, um, highly sensitive folks have a stronger emotional reaction to music, art, and nature. This was observed in 1997 and kind of the way it was described in the research is like in experience, they're more likely to experience like a sense of awe and deep, like, you know, a sense of attachment and respect towards some of these aspects and details and the emotions that were brought into the music, the art, even nature, and they may be more moved by it. And they may have a more deep emotional response to these sorts of aspects and variables. Um, I want to be as gentle as possible with this topic, because a lot of you might have guessed, I'm not sure, I am probably not a person who would be described as someone who is highly sensitive. Um, I, I probably am quite far from it. And so some of these attributes and behaviors is something that I'm simply looking at from a very research standpoint. I can't relate to a lot of this. And so I'm trying to be delicate, but let me know if anything came across too harsh. I know that I tend to trend very lightly about how I speak, and it's because I'm overcorrecting because my nature is actually very blunt and forthcoming to some extent. So that's why I kind of talk like that in videos or in general or in therapy things like that but anyways I hope that made sense what are some of the pros of being highly sensitive based on research in 2008 we found that a lot of individuals who are highly sensitive actually have high empathy and social insight in comparison to other folks this actually makes them respond to other emotions effectively strengthening their relationships yeah, as I mentioned, I'm not highly sensitive. This would be an amazing trait. I wish I had this. I'm like the opposite of this. It takes me a very long time to understand people's emotions. That's actually part of why I like the field that I'm in because it allows me to understand emotions from a more logical perspective built on other experiences that I'm seeing in session. And so interesting enough, I feel like a lot of people might think being a therapist, you need to be very emotional, which could be true. But I also think if you're logical, you can find a way around that or learn from that, which is kind of my angle. It doesn't mean I don't care about people, but that's just something that I've learned. The next one is that individuals who are highly sensitive, they tend to be very creative in attention to detail. We have seen based on 2011 research that individuals who are highly sensitive tend to because they're more attuned to subtle details, that actually enhances the problem solving and creativity, okay? The next one is they are sensitive to positive environments. This is amazing. I love this so much. And if you guys are interested, the research is the one in 2013. This is amazing. Basically, 
highly sensitive individuals actually respond better to more supportive, nurturing environments. And so they actually experience a greater sense of well-being because of that. I love that. That's just amazing. I think a lot of people should know that. It can help with raising children. It can help with connecting with other individuals. It's a really very amazing um, trait. But let's also talk about the cons of being highly sensitive. Based on research, the risk of overstimulation can actually lead to stress. Based on research done in 2006, you, because you are more prone to sensory and emotional overload, that can also lead to fatigue and anxiety, okay? The next one is emotional vulnerability. Just like being more connected to more positive experiences, you can also be more affected by negative experiences. Same research, 2013, okay? Okay. Um, the tendency to ruminate is actually more common with those who are highly sensitive. I don't, this can be a negative trait. So I put it in the con section because the research was kind of saying it more on that perspective, but I can see it both ways. I'm not sure what you think, but I think sometimes thinking about things thoroughly can help with decision-making, depending. I understand overthinking, which is kind of what the research was saying, but that's an angle that I was thinking about when I was reading this and putting this together. Let me know your thoughts. But um, highly sensitive individuals tend to overthink situations when can sometimes, which can sometimes lead to being anxious or indecisive, okay? And so the research is in the description. Um, this video had, I think, yeah, maybe the all of the research I use, it's a little bit in depth. Most of them are, but I usually break up the points one research per point. This one, a lot of the research I used in many different points because it was a plethora of information. Most research is like that, but this, I don't know. That's just the way this video came out. But I hope this video was helpful to somebody. Please like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.